Greetings from Skanderberg Square in the middle, in the heart of Tirana. Behind me is the statue of Georgi Kastrioti Skanderberg. This dude over here was an Albanian lord who consolidated forces against the marauding Ottomans. Around 600 years back, he ruled this area of the Balkans, including Kosovo, Albania, Serbia, Montenegro. He was the Christian power. He was a very strong feudal lord, an Albanian noble. He was taken hostage by the Ottomans, but he escaped from the Ottoman captivity, much like a Chhatrapati Shivaji. The Ottomans attacked this place millions, thousands of times. But each time this dude here, Georgi Skanderberg, he stopped the Ottoman influence, the, the Ottoman attack. That's why he's known as the father of Albania, the, the, the national hero of Albania, should I say. And there is a huge fair in Skanderberg Square. You have food stalls over here. There's music playing over here. There are earring shops. There is beer. There is a fair behind me with a merry-go-round. There's popcorn. You name it. It's the center of all activity. And usually the first place where tourists go when they're visiting Tirana. Scale residential buildings behind me which are being constructed. But this is a paradox because over 50 more than 50% of the average Albanian can't afford a flat here. This is what happens when uh, oligarchs take over. And behind me is the National History Museum of Albania. You have got these socialist murals urging of the workers of the world to unite socialist realism. That's the Bank of Albania, like the Reserve Bank of Albania. Albania is called Shukwipta in uh, Albanian language, just like we have called India Bharat. That's why that bank is called Banka in Shikwipirisi. These monstrosities are everywhere. The construction boom, the western uh, investments have given rise to these ugly skyscrapers all around Skanderberg Square. Over there is the opera. That's the opera over there. All the banks in Albania levy a 500 lek surcharge if you are withdrawing money using your Indian debit card or credit, credit card. Be it OTP Banker, be it Banka Inchesa, every bank has this surcharge except this one, Credence Bank. If you have a foreign debit card or ATM card, look for Credence Bank ATMs. They don't charge the 500 lek extra penalty. Which is a good thing which my friend traveling Phil Stroll told me. Thank you Tanmay for this bit of information. One US dollar is around 106 Albanian legs. Or one rupee is 1.39 Albanian legs. 
I was carrying a lot of US dollars. I decided to get them exchange at this exchange over here at the Skanderburg Square. When you are selling, they'll give you 104.3. When you are buy, you know, you are buying dollars from them using leg, they'll give you a rate of 105. So it's best to convert your currency to leg because Albania is a strictly cash-based economy. Like Serbia, where there were cards everywhere, mm, they actually don't like to take cards. They prefer that you have cash pay pay. So best is if you have euros, they take it. But I had US dollars, so I had to quickly convert to local currency, Albanian lek. But if you are carrying euros, you can. But obviously, uh, it's best to have the local currency to give at random places, let's like say kiosks and uh, fairs and small shops. The roads are pretty wide over here with even wider sidewalks or boulevards. Beautiful line with trees. It's the capital city of course, so everything will be very flawless. Beautiful boulevards lined with trees, beautiful streets, orderly traffic, no honking. Amazing. And what is this in behind me? I don't know, looks like the Hagia Sophia Mosque in uh, Istanbul, but it's actually a church over there. Let's go check it out. Excuse me, what is this? It's a church. Orthodox church. Okay, looks like the Hagia Sophia of Istanbul. Yeah. Similar. So, so we can go in and the photo is okay? Yeah, yeah I think so. I, I just took from one taking a picture. But oh. it's under construction, so you, you won't see much. Oh, I won't see much. Yeah, but you can go. Okay, so well, I'll just go and see. Thank you very much. What a beautiful church, similar to the Sava Cathedral in Belgrade and somewhat similar to the Hagia Sophia. It has got minarets and a huge cupola dome. It's got the resurrection of Christ Orthodox Cathedral. And right behind, just in front of the church, is the House of Leeds. Or the Shtepia Miguete in Albanian if you're interested. It is a museum of secret surveillance. During Enver Hoja's days, he had a very strong secret surveillance team who was given the job, given the task of securing national interests. And I think this was the headquarters. Hoja died, communism fell apart, and it became a museum. Where where, where artifacts of espionage, I believe, are kept. Looks very interesting. Let's check it out. of the museum uh, photography obviously was not allowed there but it was so chilling the surveillance uh, equipments the communist uh, the, the the ideals of Enver Hoja the dictatorship regime and his totalitarian regime with which he ruled Albania <sighs> it was something chilling this house was actually a, a, a hospital children's hospital which became a place for interrogation and the artifacts are like Oh, every room is bugged, every item is bugged, every, uh, I mean, there are uh, interrogation uh, equipments, there are surveillance equipments, secret cameras, oh God. The, 
it's just it's very Orwellian it's very 1984-ish and right now I'm going to into a bunker which obviously Enver Hoja built so many bunkers which I'm going to talk about later and this is one of the bunkers where oh, holy shit oh god this is a bunker oh what used to happen here? Uh, it was for uh, safety purpose. Safety for purpose. possible the war and okay. bombing, they could be safe in here for days. I'll take a photo of this. I wanted to show you the bunk arts, but before that, I have seen. See, bunk art is a museum, but this, this is actually a real bunker. Hoja built so many bunkers during his time, around 173 of it. Interesting. So, uh, you, you, you don't mind, want me to show you, right? Uh, no, that's okay. So, uh, here is a um, uh, toilet, oh. so they can uh, use it if you okay. make any ah, space. That's a, oh, <laughs> is that interesting enough? <laughs> Imagine a guy so paranoid that he decides to run his country into financial ruin. How? Ask Enver Hoxha. In the 1950s, Enver Hoxha or Anwar Hoxha, the totalitarian dictator of Albania, removed fascist Italy after World War II and took over and became the president or the supreme leader of the modern Albanian state and under him Albania became a more Stalinist state than Stalin himself. He was a paranoid person in Hoxha. He feared that the world will attack Albania. Albania was this jewel waiting to be snatched by the world by Joseph Stalin in the north from USSR, from Tito in Yugoslavia to communist Greece down in the south and the Americans. Everyone he feared was trying to attack, destroy and pulverize Albania. So that's why he built these, these bunkers. Not one, not two, not in hundreds, not in few thousands, but almost two hundred thousands of such bunkers. But those attacks never came. I mean, what did Albania have? And why would the world powers attack Albania? But not according to Hoja. He built these bunkers from the state treasury using the state treasury money instead of uplifting the life of the local Albanians who were dying in poverty. He built these concrete and steel structures all across the world, across the country. You can find them in random places like this one here. It's in the middle of the park. They're there in people's gardens, middle of the street middle of the park, in beaches, from the entire north to south, they're full of bunkers. Except the Great War never came. No one attacked Albania. And these bunkers, after Hoja's death, were all disbanded. And today, they are all forms of art. There's graffiti everywhere. Some of them have been converted to museums, like this one in Tirana, in the center of Tirana, in, in uh, Toptani Square. This one is Bunkart 2. There's another Bunkart 1, which is a bit 
outside the city. This is the most uh, easily accessible. It's within the city.
Mother Teresa Square or Nene Teresa as it's called here. Before she was Saint Teresa of Calcutta, she was Mary Agnes Voyageu. She was an Albanian Roman Catholic monk who was born in Skopje, Macedonia. Back then it was under the Ottoman Empire. She was ethnically Albanian. After that, as all of you know, she moved to Ireland and then to India in Calcutta where she set up missionaries of charity. But originally she was an Albanian lady. She was later canonized as Saint Teresa of Calcutta back in 2016 or 2017. But she remains an Albanian icon as much as an Indian icon. The airport of Tirana is named after her. She's not devoid of controversies, yes, but we are not going to talk about that. She's literally uh, the person due whom, because of whom most of Indians know the country of this tiny little country called Albania. Enver Hoxha, you need to have an interest in political history. But Mother Teresa, every Indian, especially everyone from Calcutta, my city, knows Albania because of her. There used to be a statue of her over here but that's removed but they have a statue of her in her birthplace Skopje Macedonia this is the university Tirana University and a beautiful square there were demands that from Albania that Tira Mother Teresa's remains mortal remains be returned to Tirana after her canonization but India refused and why should we because she's as much as her ours as much as yours and uh, yeah, but there's no, no animosity between India and Albania on that. But it's, I'm, I'm being from Calcutta, it gives me immense pleasure and immense happiness to be at the square named after Mother Teresa. Albanian, Macedonian, Ottoman, doesn't matter. For me, she'll always remain St. Teresa of Calcutta. That's her. Back after a long walk from Teresa Square, one thing I noticed here is that Google Maps don't show you the bus routes. I mean, there are buses, but I don't know where they go. Like in Serbia, it was properly shown. Bus number 27 goes here, bus number 30 goes here. But here, there's no such assistance from Google Maps. You can take taxi. There are a number of taxis. There's Hey Taxi, Mer Taxi, Go Taxi. They have a number, generally the norm here is, you, here is you call them, an operator answers and they send you, you send you the taxi to your place. And But taxis are shit expensive, so it's better to take a hotel at the very center where I'm staying. I'm staying around one, one kilometer from Skanderberg Square. And the main attractions are within two to three kilometer distance, like in Novi Sad. So best day here, center mein hotel lo, paidal ch ghoomke dekho. Paidal chalo, mas maza aega. It's a taxi, bus, it's a chakkar mein mat paro. Anyway, that was today's rant and today's sightseeing. Kal dekhta hoon, shayad dures jaunga, aapko dikhaunga. Bas, dekhte raho, share karte raho. Journey ka part bano, milte hai kal.